Okay, today's lesson continues with our graphing of lines. We add one new component to it in that we are talking about inequalities. And when we're talking about inequalities, that means that you need to remember that there will be shading involved with our problems. So, just to give you some steps in case you need it, um, when you're graphing a linear inequality in two variables, you want to think about replacing the inequality symbol, so either one of those, with an equal sign, and then graph the corresponding linear equation. You're going to draw a solid line if the inequality has an equals with it. So that extra symbol there means that you're going to have a solid line. You're going to have a dotted line if the original equality does not have the bottom line with it. So if you don't have as many lines in your symbol, then you're not going to have as many lines when you actually draw it. It'll be dotted versus solid. So we'll go through. Uh, then you want to choose a test point. Some books call it test value. Do not, whatever you do, do not choose a point on the line. That won't um, help you get what you, the information you need. And you're going to substitute the coordinates of the test point into your inequality. And if you get a true statement, then you're going to shade the half plane that contains the test point. If you get a false statement, then you're going to shade the half plane not containing this test point. So let's go do some. And see how you do if you have any questions. Again, this is carrying forward with the graphing of lines that we've talked about so much before. Graph 2x minus 4y equals 8. Um, I look at these, it's not solved for y, and 2 and 4 both go into 8. So I'm going to use the intercepts to graph that. I'm going to first put in 0 for x, and when I put in 0 for x, I get negative 4y equals 8. So I divide both sides by negative 4 and I find out that y equals negative 2. So I have the point 0, negative 2. Then if I put in 0 for y, that goes away and I'm left with 2x equals 8. Remember we replaced that with an equal sign. That's why I have equals in both of these. Divide both sides by 2 and you find out that x equals 4. So I have the point 4, 0. So I have the point 0, negative 2, and I have the point 4, 0. Now, before you draw that line, you want to look back here, okay? And back here, this has that extra thing, so I'm going to have to fill in extra and make sure that I have a solid line. So I'm going to go draw my line, which will have arrows on both sides of it. It will be solid. Um, actually, I don't necessarily want it that fat. I may make it a little bit skinnier. Okay. And let's go draw that. Attempt to draw it. Okay. So there's my line. Except I missed a point, so I'm going to fix it. You would um, erase if necessary. Okay. So once you're going through your two points, now, the next thing that we said, what I set up there was to choose a test value. Now, if the line doesn't go through it, the best test value point for you to use is 0, 0. And since it doesn't go through, I'm going to choose the point 0, 0. And when I plug that in, that's 2 times 0 minus 4 times 0 is greater than or equal to 8. Is 0 greater than or equal to 8? This is a false statement, so that means do not shade the point zero, zero. So this is zero, zero, so I'm not going to shade on that side. I'm going to shade on the other side, and that means that I'm going to shade here. Pull up this down. And if you have any questions about that, come see me. But we've done a lot of plugging things in as we've checked our equations. So hopefully you understand what that means when you get a true or false statement. Okay, let's look at this next one. 
graph y equals negative 3 fourths x. Um, that's it, okay? It does not look like this form, so this is the one where we think of plus 0, and that means that I'm going to start off with my y-intercept of 0, 0, plotting that point right there. And then I'm going to do the second thing that we did was our slope, m equals negative 3 over 4. And I draw it just so that I remember. That means my line will fall. So if I go up 3, then I go over 4. If I go up 3, I'm going to go over 4. Or if I go down 3, I'm going to go to the right 4, down 3 again to the right 4. Then before I draw it, I look back and I see that this does not have an equal to. So this is going to be dotted. So when I go draw my line, there's a dotted green line. So hopefully we'll see if that'll work. Boom. Through my points. Okay. Now you can do the test value again, but think about this. If you have just y by itself and it says greater than, then that means that you shade above, and I'm going to write 0B, because that means shade above your y-intercept. So I would go to my y-intercept, and I would shade above it. Um, before I shade, I'm actually going to write the other one, and that is if it says y is less than. Y has to be on the left side when you do this, okay? If it says y is less than, then you're going to shade below your y-intercept. So ours in this case is uh, y is greater than, so I'm going to go shade. I'm finding my y-intercept, and I'm going to shade, shade above it. I'm not doing so hot with this shading, but y'all got the gist of it. Okay, two more lines just to refresh your memory. If we only have one equation, excuse me, if you only have one variable in your equation, then that's when we have the special case of the horizontal or vertical line. Okay, um, doesn't contain the equal to, so it's going to be dotted. And y alone means it's going to intersect the y axis, and if it intersects the y axis, it's going to be a horizontal line. So I'm going to have a horizontal line through 1. So, and we said it was going to be dotted, so let's choose that same line, but let's go with a different color. So there is my uh, line y equals 1. It's dotted again because that doesn't have an equals. Now, it, it says y is greater than 1. So again, when you look at these, okay, when you're looking at this graph, this is y equals greater than 1. The numbers that are greater than 1 are above that horizontal line, so we're going to shade above it. Alright, and then the last one says x is greater than excuse me, x is less than or equal to negative 2. And again, this one says equals, so we're going to have a solid line. It is x by itself, so it will intersect the x-axis. In this case, we will have a vertical line. And where is that vertical line going to go through? It's going to go through at x equals negative 2. So I'm going to choose that dotted line again, and go through at negative 2, which is right here. So, oh, except it's not supposed to be dotted. It's supposed to be solid. Let's see if that changed that. Nope. Let's go uh, undo that and try and see if this will give me a solid. There we go. So, x is, now this time, x is less than or equal to negative 2. So, it's not the same y equals, but it should be or should make sense to y'all. If it says x is less than negative 2, which side of this line is less than negative 2? These are the numbers that are less than negative 2. So I'm going to shade on this side. And that's all it is. So if you need some help graphing your lines or remembering anything, you've got uh, 11 problems to practice. And let me know if you 
and any questions.